Hi, welcome to my 170th problem solving video on Financial Math for Actuarial Exam 2. Wow, that's a lot of videos. Will I make it to 200? Don't know for sure. It would be kind of cool if the very last video we do in this series is exactly video number 200. We'll see if that happens or not. Um, we're doing October 2018 SOA sample exam problem number 72 in this video. It's my second video on the concept of imm immunization. We're going to be using what's called a full immunization strategy involving a time value that's actually not a present value. It's not. It's at a non-zero time as a good strategy to help us find the ratio of two things. It's the ratio of a payment amount to the time of payment where we're using this payment amount comes from assets uh, and we're paying on a liability. So this is part of asset liability management. Um, the last video, vi video 169, it uh, gets into what's called Reddington immunization. Full immunization is related to that. It's a bit of more generalization of Reddington immunization. You can either watch that last video, 169, before this one, or you could go to my blog post. I'll remind you about my blog, my new blog that I started here in January of 2019. Infinity is really big. And a couple days ago, <clears throat> I made that video and I posted, I guess this is yesterday, a post about this new video, Reddington Immunization Part 1. I'll probably make a post about this video as well in the coming days, Reddington Immunization Part 2, where I go into the details about that, and I also generalize what, what goes on there. That's very important to me. Um, and uh, make some animations like you see here that I think are kind of cool to help you understand what's going on in the more general setting. But the focus on this video um, is to now do this problem. So let's look at the problem. GON has a liability of 12,000 due in eight years. That liability will be met, paid for, with payments of 5,000, maybe based on some investment that you've got some assets. That 5,000 is in five years and an amount B in eight plus little b years. GON is employing a full immunization strategy using an annual effective interest rate of 3%. Calculate the ratio, capital B over little b, the amount of the payment, capital B, at time 8 plus little b, where little b is the amount of time evidently after time 8. Wow. So that sounds uh, kind of difficult, I think. It's, I mean, it's not real long to state. Um, let's draw a time diagram here similar to the one that I drew in the last video. You've got time zero here. We've got this, an amount of 5,000 five years later, time five. You've got the amount of 12,000, the liability due at time eight, eight years. And then you've got the amount capital B at time eight plus B years. So this amount of time right there would be little b. Um, as in the last video, I will, just as something I would want to do, put the assets above the liabilities in a sense, higher. So you've got the assets that are the payments of 5,000 at time five, I'll just put a five there. These amounts are gonna be in thousands to keep the writing less. Uh, you've got the 12,000 liability that's being paid for at time eight. Maybe evidently not completely paid for, at least not with that 5,000, right? You're, you mean you got to get the money from somewhere else, but that money is gonna be made up with uh, by an asset that can be cashed in at time eight plus B of amount capital B. So again, these are the assets up here and the liabilities down here. And these amounts are in thousands. Actually, to get the answer on the sample exam, we'll have to convert back to actual dollar amounts, you might say, that are not in thousands at the end. So that's the basic setup. Now, in that last video, video 169, uh, we talked about the basic idea of Reddington immunization involved really three things. Uh, we thought of it in terms of take the, you have an asset cash flow and a liability cash flow. You want the present values of those cash flows to be the same at the given interest rate. You want the derivatives of those present value functions to be the same at the given interest rate. Um, those two things together are going to effectively say you've got present values matching and also durations matching, whether you think of it as Macaulay duration or modified duration. And then the third thing that you want that you really didn't need to solve the problem but is kind of behind the scenes is you want the second derivative um, of the assets 
with respect to, to uh, the interest rate i at the given interest rate to be bigger than the second derivative of the liabilities. And that's what's the key to immunization, or in this case, Reddington immunization. It makes the present value of the assets minus the present value of the liabilities be a function that has a local or relative minimum at the value of i that you're talking about in this problem. It's 3%. I think in the last problem it was 4%. Right, so um, that was the strategy there. And we could use the same strategy here. We could bring these amounts back to time zero. We could take present values. However, we don't have to do present values. We can do uh, time values at other values of time, evidently either maybe time five, time eight, or time eight, a plus b. Um, it's gonna be best to use time eight here. And part of the reason is that the then the value of the liabilities at time 8 is going to be exactly 12, a constant function of i, and so its derivative will be 0, and that's going to make the algebra simpler. So that's a good strategy to remember if you encounter a problem like this on the actuarial exam. I forgot about moving my cursor again. Um, if you encounter a problem like this on the actuarial exam is, hey, I could um, use some other time, maybe I want to pick a time to evaluate the value of these things that makes my calculation simpler. So let's do that. And um, instead of calling them p, these functions p of i, let me call them v of i for value. It's not a present value. Value of the assets at time 8. Now you don't have to write what I'm going to write, but just for clarity's sake, I'm going to write at time 8. That's when we're going to evaluate these things. So the asset of 5 at time 5 needs to get accumulated, push forward in time by 3 years, multiply it by 1 plus i to the positive 3 power. Then the value of b at time 8 plus little b needs to go back in time. Multiply that by 1 plus i, how much? It's got to go back in time by little b years to the negative b power. So that's the value of the assets at time 8. How about the value of the liabilities? You could write 12 times 1 plus i to the 0 power, but of course 1 plus i to the 0 power is going to be 1. At least if i is not equal to negative 1, which you know i is definitely bigger than negative 1. So this is the constant function 12. It's first and second derivative. It's all of its derivatives will be 0. That will make the calculations a little simpler. And also the fact that we got just a negative b up there will be, make the calculations a little simpler as well. Instead of like a, an 8 minus b, for example, or a negative 8 minus b if we were bringing this thing back all the way to time 0. All right, let's calculate derivatives. Let's use a blue pen here this time. The derivative of uh, the asset valuation is going with respect to i is going to be 15 times 1 plus i squared and then minus little b times big b times 1 plus i uh, to the negative little b minus 1 power <clears throat> and the derivative of the liabilities is going to be 0 no matter what i is and let's go ahead and calculate the second derivative we need to make a distinction in this video between this full immunization and a Reddington immunization. And the distinction in a nutshell is that with full immunization, it's a global minimum instead of just a relative or a local minimum. It's, or another word to use is absolute minimum is what we're after instead of global. Uh, those absolute and global are synonyms and local and relative are synonyms. Second derivative is going to be 30 times 1 plus i, and then a, uh, careful here, plus little b times b plus 1 times capital B times 1 plus i to the negative b minus 2. Now, we only need to verify that this thing is positive. In fact, it'll be positive for all i, and that'll be enough to guarantee that we've got a global or absolute minimum uh, at i equals 0 0.03. Okay, so we got those derivatives. That's probably, in, in terms of solving the problem, the first things you want to do. And in fact, again, to solve the problem, you really don't have to think about the second derivative because it's going to be the function itself and the first derivative that's going to help you actually solve the problem. And then you could just kind of assume for the sake of time, if this was on, on an actuarial exam, that it will be immunized 
uh, without actually checking that. All right, so now we plug in i equals 0 0.03 into these two functions and set them equal to what we get when we plug in i equals 0 0.03 into those two functions. So we're going to get 5 times 1.03 to the positive third power plus b, capital B, times 1.03 to the negative little b power. We'll equal, plug in 0 0.03 here, it's a, it's a constant function, we just get 12. That's what the first equation is, equate these two things at the given interest rate. The second equation, we equate the first derivatives at the given interest rate. That'll Those two things together will say also that the durations of these cash flows are the same. Uh, so we get 15 times 1.03 squared minus little b times capital B times 1.03 to the negative b minus 1 or 1.03 to the negative b times 1.03 to the negative 1 equals 0. Okay, So this is the system of equations to solve for little b and capital B and then ultimately calculate capital B divided by little b. Another good thing about this video uh, I want you to see here is that um, there are tricks to solving this system of equations more quickly. You could solve instead of trying to solve one of these equations for either capital B or little b by itself right away, it's probably best if you look at the form of these things to solve the first equation for capital B times 1.03 to the negative b because that quantity is in the second equation. And once you have the solve for, you can plug it in there and then ultimately solve for little b fairly quickly. So let's use the calculator now. I'm going to solve this equation for not capital B, not little b, but capital B times 1.03 to the negative little b. So I just need to find this thing and subtract it from both sides. So we have 1.03 to the third power is this, times 5, subtract that from 12, put a negative and then add 12, and what we get then is this quantity, capital B times 1.03 times to the negative little b power is 6.536, uh, 365, all right, I can plug that now into this equation right there. So I'm going to need to divide it by 1.03. Divide this by 1.03. That's going to be the coefficient with a minus sign of little b right there. Let's go ahead and write that out. Negative 6.34598544 times little b equals 0. Now I have to figure out that thing right there. Let's store this number in register 0. 1.03 squared times 15 is 15.9135. So to find little b, I need to bring this to the right side and divide by the 6.345985. Um, so divide by what's in recall 0. Little b is 2.507648. Three, six. Let's store that in register zero now. That's the value of little b. Now we find big B. Um, we can just use this equation back up here. Take 1.03. Um, actually, I can raise it to the positive little b power because I need to multiply both sides of this equation by 1.03 to the positive b power. So that's what I'm going to do here, raise it to the positive b power. That gets multiplied times 6.53, So capital B is this number, 7.03926867. We're almost done. Now we'll find capital B divided by little b as requested in the problem. Take this number, divide by little b, which is in register 0. And you get about 2.807. The units that I've used, again, are in thousands of dollars per year for this ratio. I want to convert to dollars per year, say. And I know it never talked about dollars. 
that corresponds to 2807 um, as the actual answer that you would write, and that does correspond to answer A on the sample exam from 2018 as the final answer. Okay, so that is the answer, but as usual, I want to talk a little bit more about what's going on here to emphasize what what are we really doing if we truly are trying to employ a full immunization strategy. We really didn't do that. <laughs> We're just trying to get the answer as quick as, quickly as possible using the original functions and the derivative, not the second derivative. But to use the full immunization strategy, I really need to think about the second derivative here. Uh, you want, for full immunization, you want a global or um, absolute minimum at i equals 0 0.03. Um, if we were after just Reddington immunization, immunization, that would be a local or relative minimum. For local or relative minima, it's enough for the second derivative at 0 0.03 to be positive. For a global or absolute minimum, we need the second derivative, derivative to always be positive, at least for i bigger than negative 1 here, so we have a global minimum because the graph will always be concave up. Um, and actually, just looking at this second derivative formula as it stands, that's enough to see that you will get a positive second derivative here when i is bigger than negative 1. Because little b is positive, and capital B is positive, and these things are going to be positive, I guess I won't even bother plugging it in. Uh, v double prime, well, okay, I should, should mention in general what happens. You want to think about it as defining a new function. This time I'm going to call it g of i to be VA of i minus VL of i. Now VL of i in this case again is constant, so this simplifies when you take the derivative and the second derivative to, you know, this thing has a derivative of zero and a second derivative of zero, so you really can just think about the derivatives of VA of i. However, in general you'd want to do this, just in case this thing was not a constant function. And in this case, it is the same as VA double prime of i, and as I already mentioned, we don't even have to bother plugging the numbers in. This quantity will be positive when i is bigger than negative 1. This is positive for all i bigger than negative 1. And I'll even show you the graph on my calculator here in a minute. So the graph, it ends up looking something like this, and has a not just a local, but a global minimum of 0 0.03. Let me show it to you on my graphing calculator. And then I want to talk about one more thing quickly. So on my graphing calculator, <clears throat> go to my y equals screen. Here is the function. That is VA minus VL, the G function. In the last video, I called it H. I wanted to call it something different for a reason there. It's, so it's 5 times 1 plus i cubed, which is what you see here, plus the value of capital B, which is 7.0392686, times 1 plus i to the negative little b power, which you can see up there, and then minus 12. Okay, so that's the difference. I want to graph this first on a, a small window near 0 0.03. This is a window near 0 0.03 x or i goes from 0 to 0 0.06. If you make this graph, you can see it's got a certainly a local minimum at 0 0.03. And in fact, it's a 0 there as well. If you graph it on a wider interval, say negative 0.999 up to 1 or something, and maybe go higher in y, I don't know exactly how high to go, maybe 5 or something, it's high when i is negative, there we go. It does have a local minimum still, still at 0 0.03, although it's harder to tell there. Uh, final thing I want to mention, um, and I'll probably bring this up on my blog post related to this video, is that you might wonder, why does this work? You know, in the last video we talked about present values at time zero, and we solved the problem that way. In this video we're talking about a time value that's not time zero, it's at time eight in this case, and we're claiming we get the same answer either way. We could solve it, this problem in terms of present values, but it's more efficient in terms of evaluating it at time 8. But why does it give you the same answer? Why is the minimum still at the same spot? I think I will talk about that in my blog post. 
Uh, maybe talk about that in a future video as well.